I know we talked about it last week. I asked if you were in the situation, would you be fine to come back? And you said, yeah, you'll be chomping at the bit. And there seems to be protocol in place to try and help those players who are maybe hesitant about returning to action. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, take a little example from the from the K-League. I was watching that. They went back and played a professional game the other day. And their, you know, their approach to it has been absolutely brilliant. They're playing play behind closed doors. Uh, the substitutes are not sitting together, not travelling together. And there's, it, it, it's a sport at the moment that... It, it is going to be different from the next couple of months, even longer. But we're just going to have to get used to it. Um, and, and from a personal point of view, I would be gagging to be playing football. I'd want to be back out there. I'd want to be mingling with my friends and playing professional sport because it is a lifeline to all those people like myself and Mark's just mentioned. These guys would get a massive kick out of seeing, and not just football, by the way, all sports. If we can try and get most sports mm. up and running, and I can't wait for the Bundesliga to start this weekend, I'll be keeping on a close eye on that. I think it gives the nation a huge lift. Uh, this is it, isn't it? Obviously, there's two sides to this argument, but we can only talk about what we've seen. Last dance, the ratings have been incredible. UFC as well, the fights of the weekend, drew a group, big audience. There is that desire there to have live sports back, Mark. And as much as people saying, yes, but how can you focus on sports when all this is going on? There is a very fair point to be made that but people need just a bit of escapism and sports a great way of providing that. Yeah, well, you know, life is going on in many different aspects, isn't it? You know, life is on hold in many ways, but in some ways it is going on and people are getting back to as, as normal as they can. Now, you know, the one thing I do agree with Danny Rose on is that it's not up to football to provide a, a morale boost for the nation. That that's that's a higher power thing. You know, that that that's nothing to do with football. Football may boost people's morale, but you can't bring it back just because it boosts people's morale. You know, it, let's not forget that there are over a hundred thousand people in the UK attached to football that are employed by the game. It's not just football, is it? It's, you know, it's kit men, it's ground staff, it's it's electricians, it's caterers. There's so many people rely on football for a living, and not people who are pounds or even more a week this this is people that are on minimum wage that need football to, to survive need football to to feed the family so i think we need to get away from this this suggestion that it's all about pampered footballers who drive rolls royces this is about an industry that needs to get back just like every other industry in the uk and the world that needs to get back to business and getting back to business is a question as to whether or not it will happen at home stadiums. Of course, we've heard over the last few weeks it's going to be neutral grounds. Now, this is because of the police concerns of safety. That seems to have changed a bit of direction over the last 48 hours, Mark. Yeah, there was another Premier League meeting on Monday via video conference where all the 20 clubs and the FA were involved. And the vast majority, well, I think it, I've been told 12 clubs raised objections to the idea to have neutral venues because the, the reason why the police have asked for it is because they, they fear that fans will turn up at grounds. Liverpool fans, for instance, when they win the league, they are concerned that there'll be thousands and thousands of fans outside trying to get a glimpse of what's happening on the pitch. So the police and the government have told the Premier League, if you're going to play again, it has to be at, behind closed doors at neutral venues. Now, lots of clubs in the bottom six are worried that playing at neutral venues surrenders their home advantage in games whatever home advantage is worth in a behind closed doors game, I'm not sure. Other clubs were saying now that their stadiums are sponsored for millions and millions of pounds by, by airlines, by big businesses. They need to play at home to not contravene their sponsorship deals. So the Premier League have now gone back to the government and requested that that, that kind of stipulation is overturned, that they will allow the season to be continued at home and away games. So we may see games at Anfield and Old Trafford again this season rather than a place like Wembley and and Brighton that are sanitised off. So there is a hope that the, the, the government will soften their stance on that one. The, the fans, obviously, are a big talking point here, but surely, Mark, if you ask them, you tell them, they should listen, shouldn't they? Or am I being naive? <laughs> I think you've been naive, Dan. I think, uh, in, in, you know, in, in an ideal world, fans want to see what's happening. And when Liverpool came back with the European Cup last uh, last June from Madrid, 750,000 fans lined the streets of Liverpool. So even if 1% of those turns up at Anfield, that is a very, very big number. I think it's 7,500 if my maths is served you right. Even if it's 1,000 people, Anfield is enclosed, it's, it's in a tight space, it's very difficult to spread people out. Football fans just want to see their team. What happens if a team is going to get relegated? It, the fans are attached to football. They haven't had football for two months. They'll be desperate to see the smallest thing they can. So. I think it's wishful thinking to expect fans to stay at home if their team's playing down the road. But isn't that look, look, just tough? Just tough. Look, hey, you turn up to the stadium. If there's more than X amount of fans, 
you lose the game. It is done. It is dusted. Surely you have to take that sort of protocol and say to fans that this is what's going to happen because the neutral venue thing seems to be something that in kind of... It's unnecessary, isn't it? In modern day, you tell someone not to do it, they don't do it. It's, it's, isn't it that simple? If it was that simple, then people wouldn't be sunbathing in parks in London when they were told not to. I mean, every weekend, every week, we're seeing people break the rules, break the regulations and requirements, and the vast majority stick to them. But people are, you know, sunbathing in parks, they're, they're not social distancing, they're seeing relatives. The Carl Walker story at the weekend when he, he travelled from Manchester to Sheffield to, to see his family, they, these are all against the rules, but people break the rules. So I do think that unless the police create a ring of steel, then fans will turn up and, and that gets back to the problem of police having their resources stretched in a time of crisis. The police don't want to be spending thousands of pounds of resources and manpower by having people at football grounds when they can be elsewhere. Don what do you make of it all? Oh, I think Mark's right. I think, I, I think it is one of those where what you suggest, Dan, should be the norm where you tell fans not to turn up in a stadium. But... Uh, you know, as we've said with Carl Walker and Jack Grealish and, and, and you know, normal people, as, as Mark said, sunbathing when it's not allowed, being in large numbers when it's not allowed, it, it, it is going to happen. It's probably inevitable. So I think because this is an ongoing story and it's changing by the hour and obviously by the day, it was worth a mention that the Premier League um, explored all avenues by, you know, mentioning neutral grounds. It was it, it seemed like a good year at the time. When you when you mention it, you think, right, that, that's feasible, that's possible. Then when you actually think about it and, and, and delve a little bit deeper, it is a an unfair advantage. Um, teams down at the bottom especially want to be playing their home games at home because it's it's familiar for the players. As Mark said there, it's difficult to gauge when there's no fans inside the stadium, but you still want that home advantage. So I think this is an ongoing story and a moving story. And I think the Premier League have done the right thing by, you know, saying, look, you know, we are going to finish the league, whatever happens, or try to finish the league, and it will not be null and void, and it's not going to be in neutral venues. I think that's the right way to go. Uh, Don, just from a player's point of view, just explain why um, a neutral venue is so disadvantageous to a home side, considering there's no fans. Surely it's still football, isn't it? Surely the best no, team you... should still win. Yeah, it's it, it's a hard one to try and get across. It's the it's the the biomechanics and, and and what happens to your muscle memory when you're playing home games and you know where you are on the pitch and and you know. Listen, if I take my, myself back to Upton Park when I was in midfield and I seen Trevor Sinclair running down the right hand side, I knew the I knew the sort of scoreboard was up to the right hand side towards the goal and I knew where. Tra All these minute things that probably fans don't really think it matters. And they are percentages. They, they are a half a percent probably at most. But I think it's just being in your car, not being in a hotel the night before, at the stadium, in familiar surroundings. This, 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 I think if you, if, you, if you looked at all the stats over the years, I think the majority of wins come from home games rather than away victories. But when you start bringing neutral, uh, sorry, uh, no fans into, this, into the equation, it's a hard one to gauge. But I would still say there's a percentage of advantage if you are playing your games at home. Right then, Mark, it's a question I feel like I ask everyone every time they're on. But uh, what does your gut say? When is uh, action going to return in England? Well, there's another Premier League meeting next Monday, May the 18th, and they have to come up with a decision then because they have to tell UEFA when they plan to come back. So I do think the government will relent on the, the neutral grounds. I think that will be taken off the table. But there are a lot of issues to address, you know, medical concerns of the players, how they're going to decide this season if it doesn't finish because they are running out of time. But I do think that the Premier League will will be back in some form by middle of June. Whether they've got enough time to finish the season, I don't know, because we're talking about middle of June without any bumps in the road. In Germany, we've seen players test positive for coronavirus. Brighton have seen players test positive. If that happens once the season restarts, it'll put everything back again. So I think there'll be a resumption, but whether it finishes, that's anyone's guess. You mentioned positive tests, but surely Germany have shown us the way. If you test positive, you self-isolate. Meanwhile, you continue to test his teammates. That seems to take away this. Oh, if someone tests positive, then that's it. The whole season's done. Well, the problem is that the Premier League hasn't been as yet as the Bundesliga. The Bundesliga has a very clear plan. The clubs have signed up to it. We know what's going to happen. In the Premier League, we're still waiting. The government hasn't clarified how things should be done, how they can train. So until the Premier League give us a blueprint as to how they're going to test, how often they're going to test, where they're going to test, 
we don't know how they're going to deal with things and that's the problem the Premier League has there's no clarity in terms of what they're going to do and how they're going to how they're going to kind of tiptoe through the minefield of coronavirus Gentlemen, as always, thank you very much. Just a reminder, ESPN FC, back on your screen tomorrow, special guest Karl-Heinz Rummenigge to talk about the return of football in Germany. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.